This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aperoa's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. I am glad you're here and thank you for letting us have a week off last week. We all caught COVID. Despite what Messrs Shouty Bob and friends in the comments section would have you believe, DC quick charging times have rapidly fallen in recent years as EVs have got more powerful charging tech. But this week, Chinese firm Xpeng launched a new car that's even faster to recharge, the Xpeng G9. The brand's new flagship SUV, the G9, features an 800 volt battery pack and a maximum charge rate of 480 kilowatts, meaning its quickest charging variant can add 200 kilometers, 124 miles of range in 15 minutes, as tested on the Chinese light duty test cycle. In addition to an impressive charge, Charging time, the G9 comes with Xpeng's second generation answer to Autopilot, which comes complete with LiDAR. This year, we've been inundated with stories about auto dealers charging ludicrous markups for just launched EVs, something that's upset automakers and customers alike. Some automakers, like Ford, have gone on the full offensive, using both carrots and sticks to stop dealerships from trying to cash in on reduced supply and increased demand. Some brands, like Cadillac and Buick, are even telling dealerships who won't sell EVs that they will buy out their respective franchise agreements to ensure that only dealerships who are committed to EVs get to sell them. But Cadillac and Buick's sister brand, Chevrolet, confirmed this week that it won't follow suit. The reason, according to Chevrolet's global VP, is that 95% of all of its dealerships already sell the Chevy Bolt, and thus it believes most dealers will say yes to plug-ins. When is a recall not a recall? It's a question that we've talked about before on the channel, as the world of connected cars means that over-the-air software updates become more common. Because of the way that NHTSA and other safety bodies are set up, any defect that could pose a safety threat to a car's occupants or other road users, or indeed is in violation of safety regulations, requires an official recall to take place. But this week, Elon Musk and many Tesla fans pushed back after a safety fault with the anti pinch settings of the electric windows of more than one million Teslas is referred to as a quote-unquote recall campaign. Musk has called on NHTSA to stop calling these things that can be fixed via over the air as recalls. However, given this was deemed a safety risk, it's technically a recall. Other automakers with OTA don't seem to complain about this nomenclature when they do an OTA recall. Against all odds, Faraday Future announced this week that its first electric vehicle, now called the FF91 Futurist, has been officially rated by the US EPA. The automaker, which still has to set a production schedule for said vehicle, said the car managed an official 381 miles, 613 kilometers of range, while riding on 22-inch wheels. While the company hasn't said a whole lot about exact final specifications, we're going to assume the vehicle still has has the same 130 kilowatt hour battery pack that earlier prototypes did, which would result in an efficiency of about 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour or 21.42 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. The fueleconomy.gov website hasn't updated its listings yet though, so I can't tell you much more. While Nikola Motors is now actually producing vehicles in limited volumes and doing its best to put its sordid past behind it, new court revelations this week pushed it into the spotlight again for all the wrong reasons. Newly released testimony in the criminal fraud trial of the company's founder and former CEO Trevor Milton shows that when Nikola unveiled its Badger pickup in February 2020 and started taking deposits, it had no functional prototype or manufacturing plan for the same. Under oath, a former employee revealed that the Nikola Badger was essentially a chopped up Nikola Power Sports vehicle married to parts from a Ford F-150 Raptor. Despite telling Milton 
Milton the concept was far from production ready. The engineer said Milton went ahead and opened up reservations as a non-existent product. The trial continues. At this week's IAA in Hanover, Germany, we saw several new electric models debut, and among them was a brand new all-electric Ford e-Transit Custom. Smaller in size to the Ford e-Transit and designed with a European market in mind, the e-Transit Custom will go on sale alongside Ford's plug-in hybrid variant of the same, going head-to-head -head with other similarly sized electric vans in the European one-ton segment. While it only has a 74 kilowatt hour battery pack, the e-Transit Custom uses the same pouch cells found in the F-150 Lightning and, says Ford, has a targeted range of 380 kilometers 236 miles on the WLTP test cycle. There's pro power on board for those who want it and a unique steering wheel that hinges upwards when parked to form a flat work surface for eating or working. The recently signed US Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 has caused quite a stir in the EV world, mostly because of its restrictions on EV tax credit eligibility. Cars not given final assembly in the US or made using US-made battery packs are currently not eligible for tax credits, nor are vehicles whose base sticker price are too high. It's caused many automakers and some governments around the world to complain, but this week we saw the first hint that the proposed legislation is working as intended. How? Well, Kia, which hasn't started US domestic EV production yet, is now readying itself to build EVs in the US for US customers from 2024 onwards. It will not only mean the company will be bringing new jobs to the US, but it will also mean US-made EVs will meet the criteria for full tax credit eligibility. And that, frankly, is a very good thing for US consumers. In order to transition the world away from fossil fuels and towards more sustainable alternatives, we need to electrify mass and freight transportation too. And while we at the channel believe a sustainable future must include a robust, reliable electrified rail service, it's good to see more and more electrified freight haulage options come to the fore. This week, the latest to debut was the e actress Long Haul concept prototype from Mercedes-Benz Trucks. While it's still considered a functional prototype, the truck is already undergoing extensive in-house testing before commercial testing with the customers next year. It offers a range of 500 kilometers, 310 miles per charge from its LFP battery pack, and that can be extended to more than 800 kilometers, 500 miles, when paired with the right trailer. Official range ratings, be they from the EPA, the UN Working Party on Pollution and Energy or some other test body, are curious things because sometimes a new-to-market EV struggles to meet its theoretical range on paper and other times completely obliterates it. And that's something we saw in practice this week when Edmunds published its official real-world range tests for the Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck. On paper, or rather in the lab, the EPA ratings for the F-150 Lightning Platinum state it has a range of 300 miles, 482 kilometers per charge, but Edmunds said it managed to get the range-topping variant to travel 332 miles, 534 kilometers, before running out of power. This result also gave the F-150 Lightning Platinum a better range in the real world than the Rivian R1T Launch Edition, but as always, your mileage may and will vary. For as long as I can remember, the auto industry has shown a huge amount of distrust towards Chinese-made vehicles, portraying them as inferior to vehicles made elsewhere. And while there are still a great deal of sketchy automakers in China, the majority of cars coming off the production line in China today are as good, if not better, than the models made by rivals elsewhere in the world. And to prove this, there's no better example than the just-released crash test results for the Aura Funky Cat, the newest Chinese-made electric car to go on sale in in Europe. Looking a little like the turn-of-the-century reincarnation of the iconic Volkswagen Beetle, the Aura Funky Cat subcompact scored an impressive five-star Euro NCAP rating, outperforming far more expensive vehicles in its wake. 
Having successfully completed this test, it's now one step closer to being ready to go on sale. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are, and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you should sign up with, and of course, how to get charging and clean energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. It's officially the start of spring in the Southern Hemisphere, which means it's the start of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. And for those in the US, that means it's time for the various political campaigns to ramp up ahead of this year's midterms. If you're not a political wonk or you don't live in the US though, you might not care about the minutia of this particular election cycle. But as we've said time and time again, elections are important. And a great example of this is something on the ballot in the California midterms this year, specifically Proposition 30, because it proposes increasing taxes on those who make more than $2 million per year by one and three quarter percent. The resulting revenue, which is estimated to be between three and a half to $5 billion, would then go towards EV related incentives, charging stations and wildfire prevention programs. So if you'd like to see more EVs on the road in California and you live there, it might be time to make sure you're registered to vote. And finally, when Tesla unveiled the Tesla bot last year and it was a little more than Grimes in a modified morph suit, plenty of people laughed at Tesla's promise to revolutionize the world. But as Tesla gets ready for AI day two, where we're told we're gonna see a working prototype, it's placed some new job listings on its website that show just how serious Elon Musk is about using robots in Tesla's factories. In one job description for a motion planning and navigation engineer for the project, Tesla states that it plans to use thousands of Tesla bots at its factories. This would certainly reduce Tesla's overheads long term, but it would also, we're gonna presume, result in hundreds of layoffs long term, which would also explain Tesla's anti-union position. Only time will tell if this move produces cheaper EVs, something Tesla has long promised, but so far not delivered, and whether borrowing staff from the autopilot team will negatively impact progress there. As the apocryphal saying goes, may you live in interesting times. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, why not switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity? It's super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the country wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep it beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back with more awesome content very soon as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge and we'll be back here at the usual time next week for our roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.